Hello everyone, this is Lugnuts, and today I'm going to be talking about overflows. So, first, what is an overflow? An overflow is a device that prevents trains that are waiting to pick up cargo from backing up and blocking other trains from getting through. So, what do I mean by that? Let's start with a simple example. Alright, so here's our situation. We have a pair of stations at the steel mill. One station for trains to drop off iron ore, and one station for trains to pick up steel. And the problem with this design here is that there really isn't enough space for trains that are trying to pick up steel to wait. So what will happen if we try and add a few more trains to pick up this excess steel that's waiting here? We'll see that hap what happens is that as the trains eventually pick up all the steel here, they will back up along this line and block the trains that are trying to drop off iron ore and then that'll cause a jam and it'll permanently jam up our network. And if this was a multiplayer game, we mu our, our company could go bankrupt. So here you can see that happened. So this is a big no-no. So one problem is that this split is just way too close to the station. So we should move this back a little bit and give more room for trains that are waiting to pick up steel. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me just skip these trains so they can make some space for me to work. Let's just put the split right here, perhaps. And then you can see this gives a little bit more room for those trains that are trying to pick up steel. But we'll still eventually run into this problem as these stations grow and we add more trains and still run into the situation where they block the iron ore trains. So really the problem is we need this uh, we need this waiting space to be large enough to hold all the trains that could possibly be going to the steel pickup. And that's not possible really. We just have to make the split further and further back. So the solution to this problem is to build an overflow. And the big idea with an overflow is that we can use depots to hold an infinite number of trains. All right, so I've moved the split back a bit so we have some room to design an overflow. So the first thing we have to figure out how to do is how do we force the trains to enter a depot? So the easiest solution is to just stick a depot on the route to the steel pickup. So if we stop that train there, you can see all the trains will enter this depot. But there is one problem with this, it's that trains will also exit the depot and once they exit the depot, there's no room for more trains to enter. So one thing you might not know about depots is they actually have a hidden entry signal inside of them. So we can actually, just by switching this to an exit sing signal, we can force that hidden entry signal to be red. And if we flip that train around and stop these trains, we can see that trains will no longer try to exit this depot until there's room over here. Now it's also possible to build this design using path-based signals. So all you'd have to do is replace the signal facing towards the depot with a path-based signal. You can see as soon as we do that, trains start trying to exit the depot again, and that's because if we have a path-based signal facing towards the depot, the invisible signal inside the depot changes from an entry signal to a path-based signal. And path-based signals do not care about the exit signals at all, so trains will start to exit. So the way to fix this is just to make sure we have no valid paths that the trains can reserve. Um, so we can just do that by making sure there's no signal there for them to stop at. And then this train here will take up this signal and trains will no longer exit here. So we can see here that we actually saved a tile of space so we can move this depot forward a tile and it's a little bit more compact this way. So this design works, but it has the pretty clear disadvantage that trains have to slow down to enter the depot and then exit the depot. So one way to alleviate that problem is by adding more depots. And with path-based signals, it's especially easy because we can just stick another depot here on the other side of the line. This way, trains can exit one depot while entering the other depot, 
and in that case we no longer really need to keep the trains inside the depot since the other depot will have space. So here we can see this train is exiting while this train is entering the other depot and it's a little bit better. And if we need even more depots we could add a split here and add more depots on another line and you could keep doing this for a huge station if you really needed to. But overall there's a bigger problem in that we're forcing trains to enter the depot and enter the overflow even when they might not need to and if our network's flowing properly we really don't want our network to be slowed down by our overflow. So next I'm going to start showing some more advanced designs that don't always force trains to enter the overflow. So for our third design and every design after we're going to need to set a particular pathfinder setting. So to do this first find the backtick key on the top left of your keyboard, click it and that will open the open TTD console. And to set the setting we type set yapif dot rail underscore first red underscore two way underscore eol and you can see if you just press enter it'll print the value of the command or we can go back by pressing the up key and then type a one afterwards to set it to true so for our third design all we have to do is take our first design add an extra rail piece there and switch the signal to be two-way. So when a train comes, the way the setting works is if there is a two-way red signal for any of the four block signal types, the train will treat it as an end of line or EOL. So this train will see this end of line and it'll say, hey, it's better to go into the depot instead. However, if we do have space here, and the signal is green, the train will see the green two-way and say, hey, there's a path to where I'm trying to go, and it will go straight and bypass the depot. Now it's important to note that we can't actually use this design with path-based signals, even if we move this signal up here. If we replace this signal with a path-based signal, the trains in the depot will also see this two-way red signal as an end of line, a dead end, and they will try and exit the wrong way. So this doesn't really work. Back to our working design. We no longer force every train into the depot, but we can still get slowdowns like this, where this train is exiting the depot and blocking this train from entering. We can also run into the problem where a train comes and enters the depot right as space is made for it, so it entered the depot for no reason. This isn't that bad of a problem here, where we have relatively slow trains and short trains, but if you have long fast trains, they take forever to exit and enter the depot and it's going to run into throughput issues, especially with a larger station. So the eventual solution to fix this will be to move the depot off into its own separate area so it doesn't block trains behind it. However, I'm going to save that for overflows part 2. In the final part of this video, I want to touch on reversers and hiding the depot from the main line. So what problem does a reverser solve? Consider the situation where we send all our trains to the depot. For example, it could be that a new train model came out and we want to auto-replace all of them. So trains that are heading towards the iron ore drop, such as this train, will get sent to the depot. And instead of heading towards the iron ore drop, they'll see the depot in the steel pickup overflow and head there instead. And then they'll end up lost. So what a reverser will do is it'll hide the depot from trains on the main line. And then we won't run into this issue. So for our fourth design, let's add a reverser. We'll first remove the depot and in its place add a dead end line that's the same length as our trains, which is length 3. And we'll also add some spur lines to the end of it. And then at the beginning, we'll add our depot back. So in this situation, as trains head towards the steel pickup, if there's no room, the train will go onto the reverser, turn around, and then enter the depot. Because the trains have to turn around to enter the depot, trains on the main line will not be able to find the depot, which means that they won't get lost when we auto-replace them. In terms of pathfinding, once the train reaches this point, it has two choices. It'll see the two-way red signal and it'll treat that as an end of line, and it'll also see the reverser, which is also an end of line. But because we added these spur tracks here, it'll see that end of line as having multiple choices, and it'll prefer that route over this uh, dead end. 
So all you really need is one split, so you really don't need both of those. It just can be symmetrical, and it doesn't really matter where you put this. So we could also put this here, for example, and this would still work. So before the end of this video, I want to show one more fifth design which I built here. Now it looks complicated, but basically it's just the previous design, but with the overflow and station put right next to each other. So this design actually has even worse throughput than the previous design because all of this track here forms one big block, so only one train can be in this area at a time. But because it's so compact, you'll still see it used a lot. There's also this extra track here, you can see. And this is just an exit track in case a train gets lost and enters this depot, it'll be able to turn around without having to enter the station. Right, so here are the five designs we went over. One thing you'll note is that for pretty much all of them, I built the depot three tiles away or with a three tile gap to fit exactly one train, but this can be adjusted. So you could move this back a little bit like here, in which case we now have room for two trains to wait. Just make sure that this waiting space is an exact number of trains or else the trains could block the depot and block the overflow. All right, that brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. I've also linked to some overflow articles written by V453000 in the description, so please take a look at those if you're interested. And also stay tuned for part two where we'll design what I consider pretty much the best overflow design. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed if you aren't. Hit that button, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.